Not too long ago, I posted this around on my social medias, from Instagram to even Reddit. I wasn't trying to be a daring artist who's going against the grain, but more or less echoing what I've been told by a lot of people that work for the companies you've probably shopped with. Long story short, several airsoft manufacturers hate having to work in Tokyo Marui's footsteps, but if they break off from this path that's become more like a canyon over the years, there's instant backlash. And today, I'm going to put that into practice. Because this is G&G Armament's new GPM 1911 competition. It is a high cap of 5.1, but this time, G&G is throwing the middle finger at Tokimurui. Nearly every important part that makes up this high kappa is compatible with nothing else. And I'll explain why, but first I want to thank GNG for giving me the opportunity to speak on this release right after Airsoft GI was done with it. They made a video of course that you can watch anytime you'd like to, but let's make our own by starting off with how it arrives. Right away, I love that GNG does this with all their new pistols. Getting a stackable plastic card case with these little labels on the front of them is just nice, especially if you have several GNG pistols like I do, or for when you need to travel with your replica. I really like these, and I would like to see more companies do this sort of thing, even if it's just an option. Opening it up, I received serial number 15 GPM 1911 CP itself with GNG smooth as butter clear plastic speed loader with the gas blowback adapter hooked onto the top of it. And yes, it can be taken off at any time. Of course, we have a warranty card and a paperback manual that's shoved into this slot that shows the basic controls in Taiwanese, English, Spanish, French, and in Japanese with exploded parts diagrams in the back. It's all pretty clear so anyone can follow along. Then we got a hop-up adjustment tool on a keychain loop, more on this later, a 30 round green gas magazine, and the GPM itself. By the way, I only just now noticed that these cases can fit just about any standard size pistol from G&G, so there's some extra bonus points for this packaging. But on to the main purpose of this video. We focus on the upper half, starting off with the orange textured tip that covers a non-standard 12mm counterclockwise threading. This is secured by a lot of glue, and sadly I can't actually show you those threads since this is a pre-sample from G&G. And they would like it back and I can't really tear it all down to its main basic parts. This is not mine to keep, only to demo and to give my criticisms on. The first of which being that I really hate that the threads are 12mm and not 14mm. Not being able to use standard tracer units or suppressors right away only makes things harder for the customer. Even G&G's UVT tracer units wouldn't fit the threads on this high kappa. This tip is metal along with the outer barrel, with the brass 6.03 115mm long inner barrel that's wrapped with the tried and true G&G green bucking, with the flat squared nub coming down on chambered BBs. With the hop-up tool in the box, we can get 120 points of adjustment without having to take down this replica. You will need to carry around that tool, however, to do this. The alternative would be to remove the inner barrel from the outer, which would take some basic tools and a workstation so as to not lose any small parts. Just make sure not to lose this tool. Scattered throughout the polymer slide would be lightning cuts and deep grooves to aid in grip. With these cuts, the tight recoil spring on the inside, and the polymer makeup of the slide, the cyclic rate is very quick. G&G logos are also scattered over the entire pistol from the slide, frame, and even the sights that are adjustable for windage with the rear also being adjustable for elevation. Realistically, no airsofters are actually making fine adjustments with their iron sights, but I'm happy to see these traits included anyway. I personally, however, appreciate these little white dots on the iron sights. They don't glow in the dark, but they're still a nice touch. Moving on to the aluminum frame and the controls that it hosts, I'm pretty impressed. I would have liked to see the inclusion of an ambidextrous slide release, but it's fine. The controls are large and textured besides the magazine release, surprisingly. That's actually a little strange to see. And the texturing on the safety that can only be engaged when the hammer is back and the checkering at 12 and 6 along the grip are good. On the contrary, the grip panels are lacking. I would really replace these if this was mine. They might look gritty, but I've seen more grip on toilet paper. It doesn't have to feel like sandpaper to make me happy, but it does need a little bit more attention. 
I do like the extended base plates on the stock 30 round green gas magazine, the functioning beaver tail safety that's extended, and I really like that the hammer actually works as it should. This means that you can rack this replica, take out the magazine, drop the hammer by either firing it or by riding the hammer home, put the magazine back in, and pull the trigger all day without it firing. But when you need it to fire, just pull the hammer back and pull the trigger. More weight savings can be found in the hammer and in the trigger that in itself is interesting. If you want to spam shots with this GPM, it's great for that. But if you really care about trigger response, then you'll have to deal with the take up on this trigger. I noticed this the very first time firing it, so for the trigger nerds, focus on how much I need to pull before this GNG fires. Then to finish off the frame, any standard pistol flashlight should be able to slide onto the rail and against the flat face trigger guard. With more GNG trademarks and serial numbers, I present the magazine. It's made from aluminum, of course, with a large plastic base plate. Now, since GNG has chosen to kick all TM compatibility out of the house, you'll be relying on these GNG magazines and their future matching releases. Tokyo Marui, WE Tech, and other high kappa magazines will not fit the GPM 1911 CP. If this is to stick, I'd like to ask for an opening near the end of the follower track to make reloads easier when without the proper tip speed loader. I do appreciate the extended follower tab though. I really wish more magazines would have these, but we need a little bit more ease when it comes to reloads with these magazines. With the GNG World Cylinder Valve inside this GPM, green gas consumption is phenomenal. I really can't take that away from this release. GNG development really shines here, as I got 105 shots off with my first gas fill and 107 shots off with the second fill after laying 10 minutes pass. But these tests were done on a 91 degree Fahrenheit Texas day, so take that as you would. I assume the lighter polymer slide and the whirl cylinder valve have something to do with this. As for me, I'm very impressed. I can only hope that GNG continues with this stellar gas consumption with future releases. If you care about wobbly parts, I only found some slight wobble between the magazine and the magwell, with some slight side to side movement in the slide, with the expected amount of movement in the barrel assembly. Nothing major to focus on. You'll hear the barrel and slide rattle as you shake it though. Yes, it can be power stroked and the nozzle really likes to hold onto the hop up, which is good to see. But the slide will hang up if you really want it to. But as for any other oddities, that's all I can find. Of course, on the inside, it's all GNG proprietary. GNG will release more replacement parts and upgrade parts as I'm told, but clearly the market for this release will be limiting right from the start. The High Kappa is arguably the most diverse pistol platform in our game. It's great for being customizable. That's its bread and butter. Make one that won't accept any aftermarket parts and it loses its main advantage over the M1911 or the M9. Now it goes from Glock versus High Kappa as a fair fight to a painful to watch cage match that the referee won't stop. G&G gets some respect for me by wanting to innovate somewhere by bringing out new technology and parts but the growing pains will be massive. Even Token Marui haters want TM compatibility or something so monumentally advanced that the proprietary parts don't even matter anymore. I could be all sorts of wrong here, but that's my opinion. I like that GNG wants to innovate, but it'll be at a disadvantage immediately when it releases to the public, especially if you like building high kappas to the extreme. But moving on to the performance, I brought out my chronograph on a bottle of 0.2 gram BBs and 0.28 gram BBs. It's good to see sub CQB limits that are somewhat consistent. This is still an early sample, so these numbers will probably change a little bit. But if it does stay about the same, that'll be fine. Gas blowback power consistency seems to be a little difficult to get, I've always noticed anyway. For range, 75 feet is not a problem, even when you have mosquitoes invading your ears. I swear, my brother's land is swarming with them right now. Making it brief, the GPM 1911 CP can do close range action. And at 150 feet with no wind, you should be able to get hits as well. I'm still dealing with mosquitoes messing with me as I'm firing, but if I really focus, I can get torso hits pretty easily. So I'm happy to say that performance is pretty good. Gas consumption is amazing, power output is sub CQB with some fluctuations, and range and consistency isn't too bad for what's to be a $150 pistol. However, $155 without parts compatibility, that's rough. 
So for my closing statements, I'd like to say that I understand why G&G Armin is going down this road. They're just tired of following Tokimurui and want to be the innovating company for now on. They want to do their own thing, so maybe other manufacturers have to follow them for a change. And this goes much further than a single marketing guy or a couple designers at G&G that they just have to put up with. This is something the CEO himself wants. This is kind of normal everywhere else. That's why we don't just see iPhones in everyone's hands or why we don't have gasoline vehicles only. If you know the history that video game consoles have gone, then you'd understand g and frustration. But this is how it works in our game. This pistol will only take off if the parts bin becomes an aftermarket C. That wasn't possible in a single day for the standard high kappa, nor was it done in a year. So this is where they need to put some seriously big plans into action. And what the community has taught me is this. Proprietary wouldn't be a bad thing if high quality parts are easily obtainable to the common man, and if the item in question is of high quality on its own. And with that said, I'd like to thank G&G Armament for allowing me to speak on their GPM 1911 competition. Not many companies have the guts to let me say whatever I want about anything I want like they do, so I hope that they keep advancing themselves for the greater good of our game. And I would hope that every manufacturer would do the same. I've tried to keep my own opinions out of this as much as possible by either playing devil's advocate in my head as I wrote my notes and by giving reasons to why things were done the way they were. But if you have any questions or things to say about this pistol, then please comment down below. We really don't get anywhere without voicing our thoughts and opinions like rational people. But I would like to thank everyone who helped with this review, including my own community here on YouTube, by commenting on my original post about proprietary parts. I would also really like to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already, or to at least like this video if you really like how I conducted this review slash overview. I also need to thank all the US Airsoft channel members. The channel has been doing great lately, besides a glitch that made me have to re-upload my last video, so maybe check that out if you haven't already. But yeah, a big thanks to everyone on the screen now. These people really help me out and are truly dedicated to helping me make my videos. And maybe you might want to join them. And if that's true, then use the link in the description so you can become a member of the US Airsoft channel or hit the join button on the US Airsoft channel homepage. I'll be sure to give you a shout out in the next video if you do, and I really appreciate anyone who thinks about becoming a member. But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Sometimes, if you spam the trigger a little too fast, I do notice that the hammer will get locked underneath the slide. And the way to fix this, of course, is to just pull it down a little bit. Now, I said I wanted a faster way to load these magazines because there's no trough here that I can just drop BBs in. Well, I did say that this is uh, as smooth as butter, right? So check this out. I, I don't know what's up with G&G speed loaders, but they are just super easy to use. And uh, just like that, I'm just about ready. Almost ran out of gas, but it still emptied that magazine. Nice. Now we're out.